guys welcome to my channel today I am going to walk you through how we can create the infinite infinite scrolling using the block provider block listener block consumer and block builder so first I'll walk you through what is the use of block provider block listener block consumer and block builders and where we can use all those things and how we can implement those for verifying a uh, some kind of login based form and there we can add it some sort of username and password and then I'll walk you through how we can set the dependency in that like how we can validate a particular let's say email ID and we can add some sort of minimum and maximum uh, verification for a particular text field values right and then how we can set the dependency of this field and this field and then enable once both the verifications are verified how we can enable this login button so it's basically a form and then i'll walk you through how we can create an infinite scrolling using the totally using the block pattern right so here it will once you will scroll it will show some sort of a scrolling bottom into the uh, device and then it will be completed so I'll tell you how we can create this kind of kind of infinite scrolling and there is some sort of uh, user profile and those things right so let me first walk you through what is uh, block builder block provider right so in this case right what happened like there is a library that is called a flutter underscore block that we can generally use for using the block pattern and there are different different components some are like block provider so what basically that block provider do is like whenever we are wrapping a parent widget with the block provider it's means all the other child widget of that particular parent can access all the states of that whatever we are giving to that parent right so into the all child widget we can able to access the state of that particular parent widget right and we can set it from different like events in that and based on those events we are able to get it the instance of that particular block and based on that particular block you are able to get the different type of data based on the state change right and then what is the use of block listener so generally what happen whenever we want to implement some sort of event like uh, after completion of some data from the server and then we want to move to another screen so we are doing we are performing one event like from we are moving from a screen to b screen right or we are pushing and we want to show some sort of alert right those kind of event whenever we want to generate so we want to use this block listener there right and this is block consumer right so whenever we want to use along with the block listener and the block builder all together without providing the uh, some sort of uh, uh, some sort of multi level I would say element cycling then we can simply use the block consumer inside that block consumer it will give you the advantage that you can directly use the block listener and the block builder inside that itself right otherwise if you if you don't use this block consumer you need to manually first you need to create a block listener and then inside the child you need to write your block builder right and you definitely your parent will be the block provider if you want to access some i would say the block in the child classes of that particular parent right so basically this is about the block consumer right and the block builder block builder is basically is always whenever we are wrapping a widget with the block builder it always accept a uh, valid widget there should be a valid widget in the block builder right and it will always return a particular state and the context of that right this I'll clarify more when I jump to the code right so in now we'll go to in this definition of that so how we can get it the block provider so there is a block provider dot off and then we can do the type casting of that particular block whatever we are going to use and based on the context we've been we are able to get the value of that particular block right 
like that in block listener we will get the context and the event and as well as in consumer we will add we will get two childs one is for child another one is for listener thing so both we can add it block builder and the block listener there right now first we will see how we can design this kind of form by using the code right so let me just move to the code here right so basically i'll walk you through so just i'm closing this all the form here right in that basically we have some sort of modules here in that inside this module we have some authentication layer there right in that i have screens in that screen i have login screen right this is login screen so this is basically a main page and here i am wrapping this block provider as i have said earlier right why i am doing this if i i am not going to use this block provider here then in the login builder this is the builder so if i won't do that thing there right then i am unable to use this block here then i need to explicitly pass that particular block from this parent class right here i am creating that block and based on the block provider i am able to get that particular instance of that block by using the provider right if i won't do that then manually what i need to do whatever instance i am creating here then i need to pass that as a parameter from here right and then it will create a chaining one after another because here in this block builder i needed and then in some child visit i have created some app text field and some login button if in this also i have needed that block so right now simply what i'm doing by based on the block provider i'm simply able to access that by just simply type casting that login block right so that is the advantage of block provider here right and now just go back to login screen here so simply i am wrapping with block provider so i would be able to access this login block in the all the char child of this builder right now simply i am creating a login builder here so if i move into login builder so here what i am doing in login builder this is basically a stateful component because i am using here this controllers so those controllers i am dispatching here those i need to dispatch right and then in that i am just using a block listener because here i want to listen some sort of different events right whenever i am entering a value it's showing some snack bar right and it's showing some sort of validation error and something so as i said whenever we want to show some sort of event right or interaction or pushing anything then we will simply go to the inside the block listener of this right and then always it take a block we the form how it's looking like after running that application so simply go to here and simply go to run and start debugging so once you do that right you can see it's running here right it's running here and we can see that username and password and that login field is coming here right and then if i try to enter anything in that right let's say i'm entering if that is less than three characters right it's giving the minimum three and maximum 10 is allowed when i enter three or greater than three it's allowing me and the error is no more exist right when it's exceeded more than 10 characters it's again so that error right same thing if we do in that password as well as right it's do that thing if you see until unless there is any error and both the fields are not verified I can't click on this login button right so once I remove that that error is gone here and if I enter the same validation thing here also the field is enabled here right so let's see how I am managing all those things here into the code right so this is basically a email text field right and then here this is the password text field here right now if I go to the modules in module I have one authentication module here right in authentication module i have created block screens widgets right so in a screen i have mainly two screens one is login builder another is login screen so this is basically a main screen in that particular main screen i am simply creating a block provider right so this is nothing but a parent where i am wrapping 
with all the child with the block provider so in all the child whoever is there in that layer in that block builder right they are able to access this login block by using simply block provider dot off context as i already explained that right so in that i am creating a login builder here right now if i move to the login builder so in that login builder that is nothing but simply a form that is holding a one text field app text field another text field and a login button as you can see in the simulator right this is the email text field another is password text field and the login button so this is basically a field here right and this is generally for creating shadow and all those things into that form right and this is the image we are using here right and then that is accessing the block provider dot of login block as we have set it into the parent that is login screen right this is the child right and then here we are using this listener thing right so i will come back into this listener part as i already told right whenever we want to write some sort of pushing event or showing some alert we can use this listener property of block listener right and then here in that we are in block builder we are simply generating that right that form here right in that again it's needed one block here right that we are generating right now let's go back into this app text field what is written here in app text field so in digits when i go to the app text field let's go there in that app text field if you see it's simply using a block builder here and again it's simply accessing based on that block provider and accessing the login block here right and then builder as i said it will always receive a context and the state right so whatever state we are receiving here based on that i am doing some sort of uh, error validations here for user error and the password error right how that is we are receiving here is whenever i will type anything in this box in this box that is input box that is username whenever i am typing this particular event will uh, fire each and every time based on whatever character i will enter and it will generate one field validation event with the type of this dot type so type will be the username and the text will be the text whatever i am entering right that and that will go into the field validation event so now if i move into the block right in that block we will have different different uh, classes one is login block another is login underscore event block login underscore state block from where those are coming right so for that you need to add one package in your pubspec.yml that is called flatter underscore block package right so i am using 4.0.0 right and because i am using some flutter lower version if you want to use some higher version you can use some flutter upper version for that 6 or 5 as per your requirement right and then once you added that you can able to see that sort of when you create a login block here you can see the index in file it's basically for importing all the files of that and then you can see login block so here i am simply creating a login block by extending the event and the screen right that will be created here and then we have a login event here so two types of event i have defined one is for authentication event another is for field value so in that simply we are using this field as validation event right and if i click on this login one i am using this authentication so just talk about the field validation event as i said and here i have defined different different state in that right login starting state error loading and login default state right and then here is login validator right so those state i am using here so now if i go to again into our text field so what happened whatever text i will enter here that will pass the text along with field validation event then it will come to the event here field validation event now it will check if the current state is login default state definitely whenever we are creating a block we will get the default state right login default right and then we will go here and then we will see that default state is there then it will check what is the type of that so 
whatever text we are entering that is nothing but user type so here it will check the user type and then it will pass the type and in this username you will get the validation of that based on that username error so that validation i have defined here right in that so it will check if text dot length is greater than equal to 3 or less than 10 if that is passing that case then it will return the nil null error otherwise it will give validation error right same thing will happen for the password as well as right it will do that thing and then it will return the email validation error as well as username and the password validation thing right and then what will happen here it will check for that thing as well as here for username and the password thing right it will check that thing and then it will generate based on that it will generate a state that is called login validator state here right so you can go here and check that into your login text field if you go here and it will generate a login validator state here and you will receive in that state what is the error you are getting if that error is null it will simply use this error as null if there is a password error right based on the type it will get the password error and the username error right whatever you will enter or you will pick the text field if that is username error it will come here if that is password error it will come here right and based on that it will show some sort of error text here based on whatever error you are receiving username and password right so this will handle these things here showing this error and the, this error for the text field right now if we see how this button is enabling here right so whenever we are generating each and event so this in this button we again have one block builder and that is also listening for this validator state and then it will capture the username error and password error and it will try to validate that error if username and password error is both are null then what will happen it will enable that particular button action here right it will call this validator in this validator we are checking if username and password error is null right then it will return the login press event it will add otherwise it will say there is no login press event based on that it will do for that thing right so whenever we are entering this valid information here it will enabling that login e enabling the login button right and when i press this login button so if you see in login button this login press event is there in login press event again i am calling authentication event so now if i go to the login event there is a event is called authentication event this event right and this event whenever doing the authentication login is finished here and that we are listening into this builder file here as i said here if this login is finished here it's showing some sort of states here right so let's try to do that when i click on that if i click on that so it's saying because the username and password is incorrect so it's showing this so it will return the error state here based on that matching the error state here it's showing the error so i'm just showing one snack bar here if there is any error and then if i will enter the right combination of username and password here so it will match with the login finish state right here and that state will be generated from this event so you can see here from the visit that is generating an event from event that's it generating an state and that state is again captured by the login builder here and based on that i am performing the action so if i simply enter some valid username and password right here like that one two three right and it will try to log in right it will log in right and it will try to fetch the data from here you can see pretty much good ui after doing the login so that is basically the authentication part i want to cover it by using some certain validations right minimum and maximum characters and in this we are using some sort of localization and some infinite paging as well as using the block itself right so that i am going to cover in another lecture right so till then you can stay tuned with my channel and you can also subscribe my channel for upcoming videos right and if you like my video you can press the thumbs up right thank you so much